Perfect, I think we can start. So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This public webinar is organized by the EUIUM Knowledge Management Hub, the Hub on Return Migration and Sustainable Reintegration. And this session is part of the set of webinars aiming to present specific reintegration practices and encourage experience sharing. So let me share with you some technical indication about this webinar. The most important, simultaneous interpretation is available in English and French. So you can click the, uh, the logo in the black bar at the bottom of your Zoom page to select the preferred language channel to follow the event. If you have any technical problem, please contact us at the email address you find on the screen. Please feel free to ask your question through the chat. They will be collected and addressed during the QA session after the speaker's presentation. As a last point, this webinar will be recorded and made available in the return and reintegration platform. So this webinar today marks the two years of public events organized by the Knowledge Management Hub. The first webinar in July 2020 was indeed a presentation on the first phase of the Forest project. So we are very happy to discuss with you all today about what we called the Forest approach and the lessons from the project. Implemented in two phases between September 2017 and April 2022, the Forest project is part of a regional program funded by the German Ministry of Foreign affairs. Its objective is to improve the socioeconomic reintegration of migrants enrolled in the aviator program in their countries of origin through pre-departure capacity building activities, including training and counseling session. So before we dive into the initiative, I quickly introduce myself. My name is Francesco, and I'm pleased to welcome you today to this webinar. I work as Knowledge Management Officer at the Knowledge Management Hub funded by the European Union and implemented by AUM through its protection division. So we are very pleased to uh, bring together today different voices and experiences from the implementation of the Forest Initiative. We will have Madame Ushani from the Moroccan Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Mr. Orge Dominguez de los Cura from AUM Morocco, who will share with us some remarks about what Forest is, its impact and lessons. So thanks for being here with us. Following their interventions, Madame Reyad from the Asecute Association will share with us key lessons of the pre-departure training implementation. Right after, we will be glad to hear from um, Madame Dansoko from Mali and Mr. Mamadou Dian from Guinea. They will tell us about their experience as returnees benefiting from the forest support. After this intervention, with the help of Yusra Benani from Ayo Morocco, we will move to the interactive session where we will ask panelists to address the questions that you will kindly share with us during this webinar. So we can now start our conversation and I'm very glad to give the floor to Madame Mouchani from the department in charge of Moroccan residing abroad of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation and Moroccans residing abroad. Madame Mouchani leads and participates in the development of projects for the economic integration of migrants and refugees in Morocco. And she ensures the coordination of the mechanism for the assisted voluntary return and reintegration of migrants in their countries of origin. Please, Madame Oshani, the floor is yours. Bonjour à tous. Merci beaucoup. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the floor and uh, uh, giving me the possibility to be with you today uh, in this important webinar. Uh, indeed, the idea today is to share uh, with everybody uh, participating to this webinar some of the key lessons of the FORAS uh, project. I'd like first to thank uh, IOM for their support, uh, which is much appreciated. Uh, and I think you have contributed heavily to the implementation of the migration policies here in Morocco for almost eight years now. I'd like also to thank everyone uh, of the various uh, contributors and participants who have helped uh, Morocco in establishing and developing uh, its policy. In 2013, Morocco uh, decided to adopt a new policy in uh, the field of migration, 
based on uh, uh, the need, in our opinion, uh, uh, to have a humanist approach. Um, in doing so, uh, we have uh, uh, carried out two massive regularization processes uh, for many migrants. We've also developed a series of reintegration or integration uh, uh, projects uh, within the Moroccan society for migrants uh, living here locally with the contribution and participation of many actors. And then based on that same approach, and in order uh, to ensure a, a better management of uh, migration flows here uh, in full respect of human rights, because this is, of course, uh, an important dimension of this uh, migration policy. So we want uh, in Morocco, and we did together with the support of IOM, we managed to establish a, a voluntary uh, return and reintegration program. Again, this is based on uh, uh, respecting the rights of uh, migrant people. Uh, this is carried out with the support of the countries of origin and with actors of uh, civil society. I must also uh, mention the fact that uh, um, we need uh, uh, to understand that any reintegration process must be envisaged uh, as a global uh, uh, process and as a process that must allow those who want to go back home uh, uh, must give them the ability to do that and also to reintegrate themselves into society uh, in, in full respect of their rights. So voluntary return is not only something that is uh, important uh, for the migrants whose uh, ability to stay uh, has been denied, uh, but it is also something that helps the person to uh, uh, settle back in their country of origin without trying again to migrate abroad and uh, uh, falling maybe into the hands of uh, uh, irregular uh, migration uh, processes. So we think that what has been done here uh, is quite interesting. This approach uh, works. Uh, it works because first and foremost, it has allowed us to uh, make migrants aware of the real possibilities that exist for them to reintegrate uh, uh, into their home society. Uh, and we've of course worked with countries of origin to ensure that this is actually the case. Second, it has helped candidates, uh, people who want to go back to have access to training uh, and qualification uh, uh, processes, courses uh, to increase uh, their knowledge. We've also added to that another layer, which is um, our ability uh, to support people uh, from, uh, I would say, uh, uh, from distance uh, based uh, uh, operations, if you want, so we can help people here, but also uh, when they're away. We've also have collected, I think, quite a lot of testimonies of migrants who have returned home and have successfully uh, become integrated in their society. And also, as I said earlier, the support that we provide is something that uh, is important and we continue supporting them or ensuring they have the right support to successfully develop their project. All of this uh, would be impossible without the involvement of uh, the countries of origin and also uh, NGO uh, as, and civil society organizations. Also, I must insist on the fact that although this works, it can still be improved and it should be improved further. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, we need maybe to work further on psychological support. Uh, people, you know, receive pre-departure training, but maybe psychological support there is needed. That's one thing we should do. Second, we need institutions in the countries of origin to be fully on board, but also maybe the private uh, actors in the countries of, of origin, countries of return, should be more involved. That would be a second important maybe focus for the future. What is also quite central, we think, is that uh, we train people before they go home. 
uh, we must ensure that uh, there is good coordination between the training given before they depart back home and then what happens once they have arrived in the country of origin. That would be a third point. A fourth point would be the need uh, to better coordinate the whole process. That is what happens before and after departure. And uh, uh, I will stop there for these uh, uh, first comments. Thank you for your attention. Merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you so much, Madame Ushani. Uh, thank you for your work for setting the frame of this conversation. Uh, I'm now very glad to give the floor to Orge. Orge is the uh, head of the uh, Assisted Voluntary Turner Integration Unit at IO Morocco. Please, Orge, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Francesco. Good morning, and thanks all for attending this uh, webinar. Uh, a special thank you also for the Knowledge Management uh, Hub uh, for sharing and holding this uh, second webinar uh, on this innovative uh, action that we call the Forest Approach, um, based on the name of the project, uh, the, the project Forest Enhancing Reintegration Opportunities uh, that uh, has been implemented in Morocco between September 2017 to April 2022 with uh, the generous funding of the German Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, it was implemented first uh, in an initial phase uh, through a national program and in a second stage um, as part of a larger regional AVRR program involving also Algeria and Egypt uh, IOM missions. So the forest approach, um, and, and forest means uh, opportunities in, in Arabic, is a project that aims uh, at delivering a comprehensive pre-departure training package, counseling and orientation sessions to migrants that are registered to the AVRR program here in Morocco, that will effectively prepare them for a sustainable economic, social, psychosocial reintegration once they are back in their countries of origin. It has been targeting eight specific uh, countries, uh, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Guinea, Mali, Senegal, and Togo, um, as the most representative French-speaking nationalities that are registered to the AVRR program here in Morocco. What I will be presented today are the two main pillars of this approach. Uh, the first pillar um, allowed to enrich IOM's AVRR program in Morocco by equipping beneficiaries with knowledge, skills, confidence, and motivation uh, to plan for their sustainable reintegration uh, through a set of pre-departure trainings and counseling sessions on reintegration opportunities in countries of origin. The second pillar uh, contributed to the cooperation and the coordination between sending and receiving IOM missions in terms of procedures, uh, continuity of assistance and monitoring of cases, but also to foster dialogue uh, and South-South cooperation among these states on return and reintegration. So, on the first pillar, um, I will be highlighting how important it has been to work on preparing well in advance, psychologically, personally, technically, um, those stranded migrants uh, from the day they registered to the AVRR um, and allow them to gain some technical tools and skills that can immediately be used upon the return. The main pre-departure activities include um, orientation and counseling sessions uh, to, to provide AVR beneficiaries with accurate and up-to-date uh, information about opportunities, but also challenges associated with the reintegration process um, and the reintegration assistance that is going to be available in the eight target countries of origin. More than 4,500 participants have attended those uh, orientation and counseling sessions that have been complemented, as you can see here, with um, other available information resources that are both online or offline, like in paper, such as country info sheets. 
contacts uh, that contain reintegration opportunities, useful contacts. Um, also, we have developed more than 40 videos uh, that are available in YouTube and are aiming at informing beneficiaries about the reintegration process, both in Morocco and in countries of origin, uh, and enhance their psychosocial preparation before their return. Uh, they contain testimonies from beneficiaries, uh, both in Morocco and in countries of origin, um, testimonies from IOM staff in uh, both sides, and all those resources are also available on the uh, project website www.foras.mr. Um, and of course, and I will come back later to this, um, all this content has been, has been developed uh, with the support of our focal points in the countries of origin, IOM focal points. The second um, leg of this pillar, pillar uh, would be the virtual counseling sessions. Um, these came into the project in the second phase, uh, and uh, they are basically counseling sessions between FORAS beneficiaries in Morocco and IOM reintegration officers in the countries of origin, mainly in Mali, Guinea, Cote d'Ivoire, and Senegal. They are organized, or they have been organized every two weeks, uh, and they help to share reliable and up to date information and advice adjusted uh, to their local realities and uh, IOM's reintegration approach. Uh, they also allowed to build trust uh, between beneficiaries and uh, IOM uh, officers and staff in countries of origin. More than 300 participants um, have uh, joined those uh, virtual counseling sessions during the last uh, year, and they have been able to ask direct questions uh, to the teams that are going to support them uh, implementing their reintegration assistance and be able to listen to the testimonies uh, of the returnees that have already started uh, the reintegration assistance project uh, in countries of origin. Finally, the third leg would be a set of short pre-departure trainings uh, to strengthen AVRR beneficiaries' technical and motivational skills. Um, we have now available two different trainings, one on personal development, uh, life and soft skills, uh, and another training on basic skills in business creation and management that we call entrepreneurship and commercialization. I will not go into many details as our partner Asikud uh, will go in deep um, and uh, to explain the content of these trainings, but more than 1,400 beneficiaries have attended those trainings uh, that allow them to regain confidence, self-esteem, and to make the most out of the support of the families, friends, and community before they return to get ready for that, uh, but also to achieve self-sufficiency in the country of origin to become active subjects of their future reintegration. Uh, they have been able to develop beneficiaries' personal, social, and self-management skills uh, to succeed upon uh, their professional lives upon their return and learn the basics of the design and implementation of businesses, including conducted a market study, prospecting clients, basic accounting, and good practices for the success of an entrepreneurial project. Um, we have also included some basic CV writing techniques uh, as an alternative to self-employment. And finally, on here, uh, we have also, and to ensure the sustainability of the approach, uh, we have developed a capitalization manual on forest achievements and lessons learned uh, from the last year, as well as years, sorry, uh, as well as to training manuals for trainers uh, or other partners that would like to replicate the content of the trainings on personal development and entrepreneurship and commercialization. We have also developed a set of uh, videos on entrepreneurial ideas, like for example, how to have an entrepreneurial idea that is profitable, how to fix a price, how to deal with clients, uh, and those videos will be shared on the KMH pro, uh, platform. They are available on YouTube and we uh, encourage you to use them in your regions. According to the different uh, evaluations uh, and the testimony of the returnees, Julia, next slide, please. 
Thank you. Um, between expectations, courage, frustration, hope, um, beneficiaries recognize the usefulness of what they have learned in Morocco in the framework of uh, FORAS, even if uh, the reintegration assistance uh, takes time to arrive to be implemented. Uh, the testimony of the beneficiaries are proof of the usefulness of the FORAS approach that help them restore their dignity, uh, give them tools to help them at least a little uh, and without obviously trying to fix uh, all, the, all the potential issues uh, once they are back home with family, with their friends, uh, in their communities. Um, on, the, um, on the surveys uh, that we did after um, beneficiaries have um, participated to the trainings and are returned in the country of origin. 78% um, of them declared the usefulness of the training to get ready uh, to get back to their families and to their communities, um, useful to boost their motivation and their psychosocial reintegration. And 71% of them declared the usefulness of the training to start a rec an economic reintegration uh, project. On the second pillar, on coordination with uh, IOM uh, missions and, and states, I will highlight uh, as a lesson learned uh, that coordination with missions is crucial. Therefore, um, IOM, um, we, we, we have some focal points that were selected in the eight uh, target countries of origin to allow for intensive coordination with IOM missions. Uh, and their basic role was to define and update the content of the trainings, but also to define and provide updated information uh, to, to be included in those information and awareness raising materials uh, that were developed on reintegration challenges and opportunities. And um, maybe the most important thing is that they, they, they act like ambassadors of the project. Uh, they participated to the coordination meetings, uh, to, they ensured the m and &E of uh, four as beneficiaries among their return. Um, during the second phase, uh, and to build on this coordination, uh, we developed uh, a specific SOPs uh, that were created outlining the coordination structure uh, between sending and receiving uh, countries. And uh, we, we call them like a specific and complementary SOPs to the existing return and reintegration SOPs. Uh, um, as since the beginning, it was clear that the forest beneficiaries, the beneficiaries attending those trainings in Morocco should be treated as the rest of the returnees once uh, they are back in their countries of origin and within implementation of the reintegration project. FORAS has also contributed to foster international cooperation and the exchange of knowledge and dialogue among governmental and non-governmental representatives and civil society from Morocco and from the eight target countries of origin, working on voluntary return, reintegration and employability. We organized two exchange visits between governmental and non-governmental actors involved in the AVR program from Morocco, uh, one uh, to Guinea, and one to Cote d'Ivoire to strengthen cooperation, promote exchange of experience on voluntary return and reintegration, and to analyze the reintegration opportunities that were existing in the countries of origin that we could inform here in, in Morocco. These allowed to adapt the content of the trainings as well as to explore synergies to coordinate follow up uh, the professional orientation sessions that were initiated here in Morocco to ensure continuity. Moreover, the project also allowed for the organization of an international seminar in Morocco back in uh, September 2019 uh, with IOM partners, main governmental partners in target countries of origin to exchange good practices, identify uh, recommendations to improve the impact of professional orientations on the reintegration of beneficiaries uh, and ensure that pre-departure activities in Morocco have a continuity in countries of origin to enhance the success and the long-term impact of voluntary return and sustainable reintegration. Finally, it has also contributed to the elaboration of one mapping of key stakeholders that provide services related to re reintegration of returnees in Togo, 
uh, and has also support the delivery of two trainings to governmental representatives, CSO and IOM staff um, in Togo and uh, DRC on AVR and IOM's integrated approach to reintegration. Um, the aim was to increase the capacity of IOM and its partners in those two countries that could not benefit from the capacity building opportunities that were available under the EU IOM joint initiative. So to quickly conclude, um, I think we, we believe that this approach has shown that um, it has an added value uh, for migrants as it complements the existing national AVR program here in Morocco but has also proved to have a high acceptance and interest of the Moroccan uh, government as it is in line with the efforts deployed by IOM Morocco to support uh, Moroccan national strategy and priorities on migration management, uh, as was mentioned by Madame Ushani. And for sure, collaboration with the Moroccan government and the major Moroccan stakeholders uh, working on vocational training and CSO, such as ASTICUD, has proved essential and will continue to be the core of the implementation of potential future phases, as it allows to strengthen the impact of the action and to ensure sustainability of the initiative in the future. I just up here, uh, hoping that all is clear uh, and uh, be available to answer uh, later any questions you may have. I will pass now the floor to Cedric and Hafida, our partner in Morocco in charge of implementing the pre-departure trainings to share some of the details and lessons learned. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jorge. Thank you for uh, giving us this insight about the project. Uh, I would like to, to highlight just two brief takeaways from, uh, from these interventions. Um, of course, the fact that the pre-departure uh, planning is a, is a key instrument to reinforce the reintegration process, considering that it builds trust, uh, it provides a realistic overview of opportunities and challenges, and of also uh, it helps to manage returnees' expectations. And uh, on the other side also, the I would like to highlight the, uh, the powerful role of the effective cooperation and engagement among different stakeholders, as also highlighted by Madame Ushani. Um, so uh, we move now to, um, we go even deeper in, the, uh, in analyzing the FORAS approach with implementation of the pre-departure training package. We will hear more about this by uh, a secret association that was indeed implementing the activities. Uh, Madame Rayad has an extensive experience in associative work in Morocco for over 10 years. Uh, she held the position of coordinator of the FORAS project within the association, within an implementation consortium in partnership with with IOM Morocco. So over to you, Afida, the floor is yours. Hello, uh, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to uh, be part of this webinar. Of this webinar. The connection is really bad. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I will try as, to do some as much as I can. So I would like to thank the IOM and other partners uh, for this partnership we've had uh, for the last three years. That has been really, really interesting for us. I will try then to uh, sum up what has been uh, done so far within our uh, training workshops. So once uh, the person is registered to the IOM, and once the uh, awareness uh, training have been done, the beneficiaries start the training we've mentioned that is organized uh, by uh, several persons. Um, the association and other uh, studies that are feeding with uh, the training with information. We also have the Sub-Saharan Committee in Morocco that ensure the uh, logistic is uh, in place for the training. So this uh, training is organized in Casablanca and in Rabat mostly, and has been conceived for the migrants that have been, or the returnees that are the migrants that are registered to this voluntary return program. Most of them are 
I've experienced traumas and I've been facing huge uh, challenges during their um, trajectory from Morocco uh, to the uh, country of origin and the way back. So they need a psychological uh, support, really. And they also need to learn uh, technical skills that are required to uh, conceive or and to manage a project um, on a long-term basis once they're back in their country of origin. The training modules have all been conceived uh, in the same manner, uh, so they last each of them 10, 10 days. So the personal development module, for a start, uh, it shows us it showed us that migrants are facing uh, challenges to make decisions or to uh, make choices in their lives. So the information or this training, sorry, in personal development, help them to uh, uphold with these challenges through uh, experiences, stimulation, and tools that will help them definitely to better un understand uh, and their skills and to reinforce their, their own skills as well as their capacities and use their potential to uh, face all the challenges that they are being confronted with. So this is this uh, first module uh, is divided in two um, uh, parts, life, uh, life skills and soft skills. So for life skills, we're talking about life uh, abilities, uh, to have trust in oneself, trust in uh, one's uh, capacities, the values, how they influence their behaviors, as well as identif identifying their uh, skills. And we also work on the self-esteem, of course. We help them also to manage their emotions and to make decisions uh, and face and find solutions when they are facing problems. And we also help them to communicate their idea. It can be uh, in their uh, surroundings or in particular situations. In the second part, uh, the soft skills part, in this first module, we're talking about personal competencies or skills to enhance uh, self-confidence, to define objectives, how to acquire skills that could, um, that could feed their needs, how uh, we can interpret the body language and the how to express your wishes and how to uh, express what objectives you want to attain. There are also social skills to reinforce their trust in their surroundings, in the security, and uh, improve the way they plan uh, or they manage, let's say, uh, uh, their emotions and their life within their communities. We also teach them self-management uh, skills. Again, we're working on uh, emotion management, how they communicate within the groups, and also how uh, they can um, use resources to face challenges and to plan future projects. So here, as it's been said already, we can insist uh, on their employability skills, uh, how they can uh, uh, write up a resume, uh, how they can perform a recruitment interview, how they can find a job basically, and how they get reintegrated in the labor market. And lastly, in the soft skills, we're also teaching them self-evaluation skills. The idea here uh, is to identify their own uh, personal skills. Now, the second module, uh, entrepreneurship and commercialization, uh, it helps the beneficiaries to capitalize on their own experiences, how they can understand the, how interpreter, entrepreneurship can generate uh, revenue for them. During this training, they learn the basics of the business plan, how to uh, do project management, uh, marketing, commercialization, as it's been said, and a better comprehension of accounting and financial management. The content of this module is based on three 
pillars. First, uh, entrepreneurship initiation. Uh, this is the first topic that we are teaching within this module. It's a way to uh, prove that beneficiaries do have the required skills that could uh, enable them through simplified techniques to develop projects and maybe implement projects. Uh, how to commercialize products and services. That would be the second pillar in, in, the, med, in the module. And finally, so how to uh, offer uh, products and services on the virtual or real market to get the basic knowledge of marketing and competencies. The third pillar, uh, finance and accounting, um, and that uh, help them to understand the basics of uh, finance management, uh, capital interests, as well as um, stakeholders. So this, these are the objectives uh, at the end of the 10 days of training. The idea is to uh, be able to uh, create a business plan. Um, why not to deliver uh, some uh, accounting exercises? To make sure that these workshops are working well, we had to take into account the needs uh, of these uh, beneficiaries so that they can really attend uh, the workshops and they can get involved in the training course. Therefore, there's a logistics required to accompany these workshops, so daily, ma daily meals for each beneficiary each day. We need to reimburse the uh, travel expenses for each uh, training day. We also uh, give them uh, two uh, vouchers of 100 uh, dirham uh, for uh, this training and housing is also um, available for the most vulnerable in Rabat and in Casablanca, for instance, uh, there are two apartments, uh, flats available for the 10 days of the training. So that was it for the logistics. Next slide, please. Here you see the heterogeneity of beneficiaries. So among the different challenges that uh, we faced, um, well, one of them is how heterogeneous all the beneficiaries are. So uh, they were all coming from different uh, nationalities, speaking different languages, some French speaking, English speaking as well as uh, other languages, um, uh, speakers. Uh, we also had a different level of instructions, level of uh, vulnerabilities that were also different. Some were victim from human trafficking, other were living on the streets. So you see, we needed uh, to face all that. There were also uh, women that had their small children with them. So the mother didn't know what to do with them, so they brought them to the training courses. These were the challenges that we uh, that we faced, and the trainers or the um, the people on board were making a lot of effort to help these mothers so they could attend the the training. So we needed to find adequate solutions to face all that. We needed to have a pedagogy that could be adapted to each uh, beneficiary. Um, the trainers uh, we chosen have been as really, really creative. 
uh, facing how uh, these workshops were being implemented and facing the heterogeneity of beneficiaries. So everybody could really get something from them. We needed to facilitate the content sometimes. We need to explain uh, the content through exercises, uh, with games as well, so that uh, they could really acquire the knowledge we wanted them to acquire. We needed to uh, build the session each day based on the participants' needs. Um, however, most of them have uh, shared that this was a really interesting experience for them on which they could capitalize. There was a technique implemented in order to help the beneficiaries to elect a member among themselves that had maybe a higher level of instruction so that he could monitor uh, the rest of them. They also, there were also advisors appointed, and uh, some beneficiaries who spoke different languages were doing the interpretation for those who could not understand, especially for those who were speaking um, um, dialect from their own countries. So the good practices from that would be uh, from from this training uh, are the following. So the project, the program as such, is a good is, is a good practice. It's something innovative in Morocco. Uh, it helps the returnees to uh, return and by preserving their dignity, it enabled them to uh, get more empowered and therefore to take their future into their hands in their country of origin and to make sure their integration is uh, uh, efficient. The training sessions uh, were also exchange a forum, fora, between the participants. They could exchange about their experiences, their good practices. We saw that uh, having several parties executing the same program were uh, reinforcing the, the implementation of the program as such, and which was uh, delivering more uh, outcomes than expected. So there were there have been two phases for the forest, as I said. Uh, we've been doing some modification during the second phase. Uh, we've changed the training duration. Uh, it has been extended so that uh, extended. Uh, we added two more days and uh, we combined the life skill and the soft skill within the same module to make sure that the knowledge was acquired as we wanted to. The adaptation uh, happened within uh, the training class. We saw that uh, uh, the trainer were um, really creative in adapting themselves when they faced difficulties and they realized what needs the beneficiaries uh, needed to be fed or to be covered. As I said, the vouchers uh, have really been positive uh, for uh, the, uh, the attendees. It was easier to... Uh, to, to, to give them vouchers instead of giving them food or uh, hygiene kits. And to conclude, I would like to insist on the expert role who was in charge with, uh, in sh with the adequation or consistency of the program during all the duration of the project. Uh, there's, so she's been uh, really in touch with the trainers to understand the quality 
of the training and to make sure that they were as beneficial as beneficial as possible for the migrants. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm here for any kind of question. Through the training package for showing us how this was crucial to reinforce the motivation and capacities of returnees also to uh, share some uh, good practices from the implementation of the of the training so um, now we are very happy to hear from those who have actually benefited from uh, the forest support and i'm very glad to introduce to you uh, Mrs. Aminata Dansoko from Mali uh, uh, that will kindly uh, join the IUM premises today to talk with us. So over to you, Aminata, and thanks for sharing your intervention. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dan Soko Aminata. Um, I'm working as a representative of the ADA service in the food industry. It's a pleasure for me to be with you. It's the first time, and it's also a new experience for me, of course. I have been a beneficiary of the forest project. It hasn't been really easy at first uh, to make the decision to take part, but thanks to a friend, I've been convinced to register and to integrate the, pro the forest project. And it has been really, really beneficial uh, for me. It, uh, the trainer, the, the training has converted me into a, a courageous, uh, ambitious person, which has uh, brought me to create my own project and to implement it. Uh, the training we got uh, within the forest project uh, was uh, well prepared. I got uh, housing, uh, food, uh, the expenses, travel expenses were covered. I've been really warmly welcomed. Uh, before the training, I was desperate. It was really hard for me to come back to my own country. Uh, the objective was Bamako, Morocco and France. I thought that in Morocco, I would uh, then move on to France, but it was the opposite. Uh, the savings I had, I've had been given to the person who was supposed to uh, make me travel by sea to France, but it was it was not the case. And um, I was uh, totally desperate and a friend from Senegal um, uh, has helped me, had put me in touch with the forest. Uh, so I've been supported. Uh, I received a training and it was the commercialization and entrepreneurship module I, I, I did. And during this training, I really have been accompanied and uh, helped, supported. I was motivated and I must say I've been really happy during these 10 days. The teachers and the trainers have been really, really nice with us. and. Uh, I've been mentally, physically prepared for uh, taking uh, my life into my hands. So then afterwards, I went back to Bamako and they've uh, helped me financially and helped me from a logistic point of view to develop my uh, project in the food industry. And the funds I got have enabled me to start my company and now I have that company and I'm uh, working full time. So it means that now I am an independent and autonomous woman. I manage well my, uh, my business and um, I've been participating to fairs. I've been offering uh, uh, 
my products. I also took, uh, attended international affairs with a stand uh, to uh, showcase uh, my products and to have a direct contact with potential customers. And I could um, uh, sell uh, my products that are starting from raw materials up to finished products. There are several steps to follow and I've been able to put them on the market. So it's true that within the entrepreneurship, there are high ups and downs, but I am um, bold. Uh, I always have new ideas to move on and to develop my business. And in the coming days, I really want my business to grow. Um, I want my brand to be recognized at the national and international level, and I would be glad to have other trainings on um, business management and how to develop my, uh, my business. I could also benefit from uh, human resources training. So far, the first training I I, I attended in the food uh, industry have really helped me to move on and and to develop my company. That's what I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Renata, for sharing uh, for sharing your story. We really appreciate your openness and availability today. Thank you so much again. So I'm now very pleased to give the floor to uh, Mr. Mamadou Dian. Um, over to you, Mamadou. The floor is yours. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is C. Mamadou Dian. I'm a beneficiary of the Forest 2 project that took place in September and October 2021 and has been financed by the IOM and coordinated by ASTICUD. I arrived on the 25th of November 2021 and during my training, I've been able to acquire some uh, skills in the entrepreneurship and personal development areas uh, in the personal development module i've been able i've been able sorry to gain uh, self confidence and to develop a team spirit and, and sharing spirit within the entrepreneurship um, module i've been able to develop my creativity to select one project idea to make the difference between a problem and a need and also to do my daily accounting before I came back, I've decided to choose uh, a sector such as general me mechanics and IOM uh, Guinea has really supported me to present my, um, my uh, my application towards the, uh, the ministry. Um, I'm able now to create a, a, a revenue generating activity within the transport sector and the IOM has um, offered me a motorbike uh, that enables me to uh, attend a school um, I've been accepted in that is pretty far away from my house. After the morning session, I'm also working in the afternoon as a taxi driver. I've realized that most of the migrants who are back, the returnees who are back in my uh, uh, country are, benefic benefiting, um, are benefiting from the transport sector. And this activity uh, as a taxi driver helps me to cover my needs and my family's needs. The training I did in Morocco enabled me really to uh, build up my self-confidence and to find uh, something good to do in my country of origin, because what I've seen is that the irregular migration is absolutely not a good way to follow. 
that's not something I would um, encourage. This uh, training in Morocco has really helped me to choose reintegration and to measure my profitability. So I thank all the migrants who have had the courage to go through the IOM to uh, return to their country and to f attend the Forest 1 and Forest 2 trainings so they could come back at home in their country of origin and uh, start businesses. And I invite all migrants to do their integration uh, program uh, before they return. Thank you for your attention. And Ms. Aminata, for, 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 your, for your words, for your availability again, uh, for telling us more about the impact of forest training on your social economic reintegration. Uh, without your voices, today's webinar will be definitely uh, not the same. So uh, especially in this effort of capturing lessons and practices from the project. So we have reached the last session uh of the of the webinar we can move now to the question answer i am very happy to leave the floor to Yusra benani from IUM morocco who will kindly moderate this interactive session over to you Yusra. thank you francesco and thank you to all the participants for all the questions that we have uh, received uh, on the chat box uh, we have received some general questions uh, related to what is for us and uh, what is the beneficiaries and what is the, the means of for us. So maybe I, I just will give uh, a quick introduction before to go to very specific uh, questions uh, for our panelists. So for us is, a, is the program who allowed the beneficiaries who are uh, registered to the to the assisted voluntary return and reintegration program to benefit from uh, pre-departure preparations in order to prepare their sustainable reintegration. Um, all these uh, detailed information would be available on the uh, PowerPoint, the presentation that we have uh, done today. Uh, and for us, it means uh, in Arabic uh, opportunities. Um, so that's it related to the specific or, or general questions that we have received on the chat. And uh, now I will maybe give the floor. I will address questions to um, specifically Jorge uh, concerning. Uh, I, I I think that uh, we had a confusion on the chat also concerning uh, the targeted countries uh, related to the project. Uh, so we have received the questions that uh, have highlighted the fact that there is eight uh, countries uh, targeted um, at the beginning of the project and uh, they have understood that only four have stayed. So maybe the confusion is done vis-a-vis uh, -vis the fact that there is eight countries uh, of origins in general that are targeted by the project and only four countries that have participated to the reintegration counseling. Um, so, and we have another questions, uh, another question related to what are the type of profile of migrants that have been um, assisted under the FORAS. So Jorge, if you could give us more detail about this question, please. Yes, thank you, Yustra. Um, absolutely. Um, on the confusion on countries, uh, yes, we target eight uh, specific um, nationalities uh, that are registered to the AVRR uh, program, the main nationalities, French-speaking nationalities registered to the AVRR program. And when we decided to implement the virtual counseling sessions with countries of origin, uh, as it was still a pilot action, uh, we only identified four um, IOM uh, countries, Guinea, Mali, Senegal, and Cote d'Ivoire to participate uh, in those virtual counseling sessions. But uh, Togo, DRC, Cameroon, and Burkina Faso are the other four um, countries that also, uh, um, which nationalities can also 
attend uh, the pre-departure uh, training and counseling package. Um, as per the profiles, um, as the um, FORAS project is very closely interlinked uh, with the AVRR uh, program uh, from Morocco, um, the beneficiaries are shared um, and uh, we mostly find uh, a 75 percent of uh, adult uh, men, uh, 25 women, um, ages between 18 to 40 uh, for the vast majority of them. Uh, but we also have uh, unaccompanied and separated migrant children that can attend uh, the, um, the training sessions and the counseling sessions. Uh, starting from 15 years old, more or less, uh, so they can um, better um, use the content of these uh, trainings. Any other questions? Yes, thank you, Jorge. Uh, so other question uh, related to the follow-up. So first, what is the mechanism in put it in place in order to ensure the continuity and sustainability? Uh, between the trainings offered in Morocco and uh, the reintegration offered in the countries of origin. And this question is also linked to another one, uh, which is the MNE, the monitoring and evaluation, how the monitoring and evaluation was done under this uh, project. Um, and uh, another one, uh, how, uh, how the management team um, have done or experienced the pre-decision uh, that allowed us to uh, actually determine the, the the beneficiaries and also how uh, the assistance that uh, has been has been provided under for us uh, has been supportive uh, in order to enhance the safe migration. Okay, a uh, lot of questions in, uh, in, in there. Um, on continuity uh, of, uh, of care and to ensure that uh, what was provided uh, in Morocco before the return uh, can contribute uh, to what IOM offices in countries of origin can, uh, can implement, uh, mostly on reintegration assistance. Um, that's why the, the coordination uh, with, the, with the missions was really important. First of all, um, as IOM cannot know what are the countries uh, going to, to, to implement, so we needed them to provide us with updated information to better inform beneficiaries of what can they expect uh, once they are back in the in the countries of uh, of origin, um, some of the work on continuity that we have been uh, uh, on the going to is to ensure that, for example, if uh, someone here in Morocco uh, attends an uh, entrepreneurial training. Uh, we can ensure that the content uh, would be enough uh, and uh, the same person doesn't have to um, attend the same training once they are back in the countries of origin as a first step uh, to integrate uh, or to um, initiate the reintegration assistance. Um, so the this communication is ongoing and uh, uh, on a monthly basis we inform missions of which beneficiaries that have already returned have followed it of uh, or, or the other uh, training to, to ensure that there are no overlaps um, in, in there. On the ME part, and I saw some uh, some of these questions in uh, in the in the chat box. Um, in general, uh, we saw high satisfaction uh, rates uh, from beneficiaries um, before returning. However, we don't have enough quantitative data uh, to prove that actual impact of the pre-departure trainings once uh, they are back. As, as you all know, um, there are other factors that come in uh, when it comes to reintegration and satisfaction and sustainability uh, once they are back in countries of origin. But in general, um, the, the focal points in countries of origin have assessed that the beneficiaries of the FODAS project are usually better prepared and better equipped uh, for their reintegration. But of course, in the absence of any quantitative data or very low quantitative data, 
data and comparative uh, analysis, this remains a general impression. Um, IOM um, uses the MN. Uh, available tools, uh, the, the AVRR ME package, uh, monitoring tools um, that uh, measure satisfaction, sustainability at programmatic and individual level. And what we have done is to add adapt those uh, existing tools uh, to add a couple of questions on um, to try to better measure the um, impact of these pre-departure training. So uh, for instance, if someone is returning from Morocco, uh, there would be a question like, have you attended a training before your return? If they say yes, uh, uh, there will be a couple of questions on the impact at social, uh, psychosocial and economic level of these trainings. Thank you, Jorge. Uh, so as you mentioned focal points, we have received some questions related to the focal points. Uh, the first question is uh, how the focal points have been designated. Are there parts of the civil society or from which organism they, they are working with? And the second question was uh, related to the uh, the, to the child protection, if there is any uh, child protection uh, mechanism or other uh, procedures that have been put in place during this project. Okay, um, on the focal points part, they are IOM uh, staff. Um, mostly working on reintegration assistance uh, and, and on the um, AVRR. Uh, they, they are part of the AVRR teams in each, uh, in each mission. Um, and they are in direct contact uh, with um, their governmental and uh, civil society partners in, uh, in, in countries uh, of origin. I would agree with the person that uh, asked the question of if they are part of civil society. Uh, I think that would uh, help to ensure uh, durability of our AVR approach uh, and, and they could be um, more uh, implicated uh, on the follow-up of uh, the, the returnees and doing their the reintegration assistance. But as for now, and also to facilitate uh, the sharing of information uh, between missions, they are part of, um, of uh, the AVRR IOM team. On child protection, um, no specific measures under the FORAS uh, program, uh, as uh, they are already existing uh, under the AVRR uh, portfolio in, um, in Morocco. Um, I think that uh, Hafida uh, was the sharing some interesting stories about how we tried uh, to ensure that uh, single parents uh, could bring their, their, their children to the, to the trainings uh, to, to be able to, uh, to, to ensure that they can uh, participate and then single parents can access um, the, um, the trainings uh, in the same uh, way uh, of any, any other beneficiary. Uh, not without challenges, but I think that we, we could overcome them. And as I said, some um, unaccompanied and separated children could also uh, attend those of training uh, and then return as in the in the normal process to their to their countries of origin. Thank you. Uh, last question and uh, really sorry for the other questions. All the unaddressed questions will be uh, on the reintegration uh, on, on the return and reintegration platform. So the last question is. Uh, related to the intervention of focal points uh, during the reintegration process of the of the returnees under the program for us. Um, that, as I said, depends on uh, each and every country. So I will not be able to, to, to answer on the exact um, work. Maybe uh, if I don't know if we have the, the time or we could uh, answer that on the on the platform as uh, we have in the room uh, some of our focal points and they could share also uh, what is their, their perspective and how they, how they work. But as I was saying, um, what we ask them since the beginning is that even if they are not that 
directly providing uh, reintegration uh, assistance to forest beneficiaries, um, they should act as ambassadors and inform their colleagues uh, that um, this specific person attended this specific training. So uh, let's uh, make sure that there are no overlaps uh, and no like to, to share the information uh, that is shared uh, in in Morocco and uh, to provide, uh, if possible, a specific attention to those uh, returnees. Thank you, Jorge. I, I leave the floor to Francesco. Thank you, thank you, Yusra. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, everyone for uh, for this very interactive session. For interest in the in the forest approach, as mentioned by Yusra, uh, we will uh, uh, address the questions that remain unaddressed in the return and integration platform community. As you see on the slide, the conversation goes indeed online. Uh, please do not hesitate to register to the community's platform. Uh, the link will appear soon uh, in the chat uh, and join the reintegration group uh, under which you will find a dedicated forum where you can share comments experiences with us uh, just before leaving the session it would be great if you could take a few seconds to um, respond to the polls that will shortly appear on the screen. Um, and as last information, let me remind you that the recording of the webinar will be shortly available on the return and reintegration platform in both English and French. So we have reached the end of this session. We really hope that it was an informative and useful one. Once again, many thanks to the speakers that join us today. Thanks also, a big thanks to colleagues in Rabat and Geneva who helped on the organization and moderation. Please do not hesitate to contact us directly using the email address you see on the screen. And on behalf of the Knowledge Management Hub, thank you so much again for attending this session and I wish you a nice rest of the day. Goodbye. Thank you very much.